I should probably plug my phone in. Let's see if it'll auto flip. <laughs> Not it. Okay, that's good. Except I didn't need it that way anyway. My foot is asleep. <laughs> okay, so I'm installing uh... Actually, I don't know what I'm installing and that's the problem. Got a new uh, thingy. It's an SSD. So this is what's going to be my new uh, storage drive and operating system drive. Welcome, one viewer. Um, I'm trying to figure out what to install on this drive. I want everything on it to be open source. But I don't know if that's even possible. I shouldn't be flipping like that. Okay. So I fence the corner of it and I want my case or packaging to be pristine. But the thing is, I don't think everything is available uh, as something that's open source. Um, I think Linux has some proprietary drivers and even if you've got a, an operating system the UFI in it isn't necessarily open source either and the hardware like that all that stuff is running on that definitely is an open source um, I looked at like risk 5 and stuff uh, because I think Arduino and Raspberry Pi, um, I think that stuff is is actually, you know, has some proprietary stuff in it, you know, and and even if it's not, it's like not wholly documented because you've got to obscure it somehow, like you know the stuff that's in it so the hackers don't get in. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Because I don't. I don't know of any uh, integrated circuits that are totally open source. Um, you know, and the thing is just, I haven't even started to look into it. Like, um, you know, there's some electronics that are open source. Like, hey, I can get some bare, like, like what even is open source? Like that I can get that's totally open source. Um, like, because even if I were to get copper, like, okay, do I have a copper mine that I own? You know, is that copper mine open source? Um, like, I don't, I don't even know where to start. 
like I guess it would be, hey, I'm going to have a communally owned copper mine that just happens to have an infinite supply of copper in it. You know, I mean, even if you had, like, the problem is that you've got, like, open source software, like, as a concept is infinite, right? Like, anybody can access it, and there's no limit on how much money you have. You don't have to ask for permission to use it. Um, you know, there's certain licenses that restrict it to, like, just consumers, you know, and, and companies above a certain size aren't allowed to use it, or companies that do evil things, you know, aren't allowed to use it. So there are some restrictions uh, that you can put on open source stuff, but I don't know if that means that they're not open source anymore. You know, because my goal, I guess, what my end goal is, have access to something that can't be deprived from me unless I do something unethical. Um, and even then I'm like, okay, uh, I don't want someone else to decide what's unethical. You know, I want people to hold me to my ethics that I hold, um, you know, but I certainly don't want someone else to be making up arbitrary ethics and then holding me to those things. Um, you know, I don't want, I don't want, uh, like, I don't know, like some really authoritarian country like in Afghanistan or something, you know, or even certain parts of the U.S. to go, like, we're not going to allow you to use open source software for such and such a cause. Um, you know, so I guess, I guess I have to think bigger, you know, and, and kind of put things into context because context and nuance is hard to come by nowadays, like in social media. Uh, I definitely don't think you'll find it in like microblogging platforms, you know, or, uh, you know, a bumper sticker can't really convey a whole big long EULA um, to people. Uh, you know, the, the fine print exists for a reason. Like, you gotta define all your terms, you gotta put restrictions in there of, you know, how the language is being used and stuff in there, um, you know, and, and you really want to clearly convey your intent and stuff with an EULA, um, you know, because, I mean, do you really want, like, some authoritarian government to go in there and go, hey, thanks for the free software, I'm now going to uh, commit war crimes with your open source software. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really want that for stuff that I make. Like, I don't want to be party to something like that, you know? Um, I'd rather make stuff that has a good, uh, end use, um, rather than an evil one. Like, I mean, that seems like a no-brainer, but, you know, I don't really know what the people are like in the open source community. Um, aside from just going, you know, we don't, we don't want to be restricted for how we use our own software. Uh, I think, I mean, I think that's something that most people can agree on. Um, you know, just if I buy something, I want to be the one who dictates how that's, that product is used. Like, I don't want Big Hammer to like go yeah, we don't want you to use this on screws. I'd be like, no, I'm going to use it on screws if I want to. Um, so yeah, I, I realize this is probably going to sound very, very vague in general, but like, I mean, that seems like a good approach when you're approaching a broad subject, right? Like if it's a, big broad subject you get, you should be speaking in big broad terms right like i, I don't want to get bogged down in like 
you know, some very specific thing that's for a very specific use case. Uh, like, why would I be talking about how... Why would I be talking about how there's been a fix released for Lenovo laptops, AMD Lenovo laptops, um, for certain idling stuff, and I don't even know what software is going on that thing. Um, There's probably going to be, uh, you know, some uh, moments during this stream where I'm just like reading stuff. I don't really feel like um, I don't really feel like uh, kind of streaming my desktop because, like, I mean, that seems like there's some opportunities there for uh, privacy and security breaches. Like, even, like, uh, I think some people, like, are very good at security and stuff, but I'm, like, I'm, I'm literally just doing the most simple thing possible by streaming this. You know, the simplest way possible. Probably. But, like, you know, people can use sunlight and, and geography and probably with the layout of a room and stuff you know, time of day, like when someone started streaming, uh, and how much light there is in a room, you know, like they can figure out all kinds of stuff. Like people are really good at being detectives. Um, and even like putting my face out there is like, I mean, that's like a really big security risk, right? Cause people can dox you with just your face. Like, I don't know, use Google image or reverse image search or something. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to be silent, going silent like a lot of times because I'm reading stuff and I might not read it out loud to you guys, um, but I might say, hey, this is the web page I'm looking at. That's a good intro, isn't it? Like, that's a good rant. One viewer who's totally not a bot. Anything? You got any any questions? Nothing. We're just gonna like stare at each other. All right. So I should untangle my mouse. I'm on the gratis versus libre um, page of Wikipedia. This page, like Wikipedia is a mess. Um, Wikipedia will be like, please contribute us money. Please contribute money to us, uh, or please contribute citations and stuff. But then, like on certain articles, they have a lot of restrictions on them. Or you know, as soon as um, you know, when you try to submit 
like significant changes to something or insignificant changes they're like look you know if you submit something something significant they're like no this has to go through review first or um this is too much of a major change and you should be discussing this elsewhere you know if it's a insignificant change they're like yeah this isn't significant enough for us to add it in here uh like gridcoin um is probably an example of something that like they're like no you can't add any information to this even if you're the project that has developed it you have to have a journalist write up a review of it or, or talk about it it's like okay you know what the journalist is going to do he's going to go talk to the people that have developed the software and he's going to say yeah this is what they said so it's like okay you you can either have a primary source of information or you can have a secondary source I mean, what are, you, what are you gonna do? Like have like a whole bunch of journalists? Does that make it any more consistent? Uh, you know, that they're all saying, yep, they said the same thing to us. We checked it out for ourselves. This is what's going on. And then they're like, oh, but none of you guys can like edit these. And it's like, it's kind of like amazing because it's like, um, you do realize that these journalists work for corporations, right? Like these corporations are for-profit institutions, right? Like they're proprietary. They're they're not nonprofits. You guys are are a nonprofit organization that is supposed to be open source, and you want journalists that work for for-profit proprietary companies to give you the information for your website. Like, you don't allow original research, but you're okay with journalists doing the original research. Like, do you, do you see how this doesn't make a whole lot of sense here? You're kind of like sabotaging yourselves by doing this kind of stuff. Like, I realize that, see, this is why I think I need to learn game theory, um, you know, the math side of things, because, like, like, I realize that there's a way that you can abstract and then generalize these kind of problems, um, you know, but I don't know exactly how to do that. Like, there's got to be some mathematical solution to this kind of stuff. I, eventually I'm going to have to leave because I've got somewhere to be later. Okay, so yeah, what I was trying to say was the gratis versus libre page on Wikipedia, it's got a note on there that says we need citations, and that note has been there for eight years, like, this is a free website, this is, this is the open source thing, this whole thing that you're talking about here, this is, this is you guys, this is your area of expertise, do you guys know anything about this? Maybe, it's been eight years, you guys have kind of been steeped like in open source stuff this whole time that your website's been going on like since day one of wikipedia pretty much do you have anything to say about gratis versus libre that maybe could uh warrant um updating the page on open source related stuff Seems like most of the changes on Wikipedia are like, you know, just talking about uh, kind of the backgrounds of cities and stuff. Like, um, like 
Podunk is a city in Idaho that has X many people. It was established in 1813, yada yada. Doesn't seem like it's on, it answers or really talks much about like fundamental stuff that um, relates directly to the meta topic of their own website or the philosophies that surround it or even, you know, kind of fun fundamental questions about philosophy and math and science. Like when I kind of go down that rabbit hole of like first or zero with order philosophy or logic, um, they just do not have those web pages uh, set up in a good way, and there's not a whole lot of information on them. And even, you know, I, I know there's this coming crisis with Wikipedia where the amount of people working on it is getting less and less, um, you know, and usage of it, I think, eventually is going to become less and less. And it's a worrying thing to me, um, not just because of Wikipedia, but kind of I see this as um, kind of affecting sources of information that are free and stuff, um, like free as in money, uh, which is kind of what this web page is talking about. Um, like, I kind of worry for the future right now because, you know, there seems to be this kind of um, war going on for the soul of, of people. Um, maybe it's just in the U.S., um, but, you know, kind of... The U.S. tends to be, um, have a ripple effect in the rest of the world. But it's this kind of um, thing that I see happening, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of been coming to a head lately uh, of self-interest versus uh, community interest. Um, or to put it another way, individualism versus uh, altruism, or to put it in another another way, um, nihilism, moral nihilism, uh, versus, I don't know what the opposite of that would be, um, it, it might be just moral nihilism versus having any kind of ethics at all. Um, you know, I, I see it in a lot of people, even the most idealistic people, where they're going, you know, I have very firm beliefs on such and such, but, you know, as soon as someone cuts them a check, you know, uh, they can, their, their ethics can be bought, you know, uh, they can be like money is, is, you know, it's the old adage that money is power and it can really buy a person's soul. You know, you can, uh, convince them by just kind of, uh, paying their way into your belief structure. Um, and I don't know how to deal with that. Uh, you know, I used to be very, I'm, I think I'm still, uh, morally nihilistic in some ways, but, um, you know, I, I'm less so than I used to be, right? Uh, a lot of times there will be personal things that come to someone's life and they kind of throw them through a paradigm shift. And I definitely went through at least one of those, you know, I've been through a whole bunch of them throughout my life, but, you know, the kind of, it, it seems like my own soul is up in the air as far as, as my ethical structure goes. Um, you know, 
which way do I go? Like, how am I going to survive uh, in the world that's coming? And I don't have a good answer to that. Um, you know, the, the people that I want to defend, uh, you know, and, and my own survival seem to be very much a threat, uh, under threat. And I don't know what to do next. And that really, uh, is directly related to the open software thing, um, or open source software. You know, because uh, I think no matter what I end up doing, you know, not having these kind of artificial restrictions imposed on me from someone else uh, will probably go a ways in letting me figure things out on my own. You know, if I'm dependent, like part of the problem with restricted or proprietary software is that I'm dependent on someone else fixing something. If something goes wrong with software, like Maya, um, I have to wait for them to fix it. Like, I can't just fix it myself. I can ask in a forum, did they fix this yet? And they're like, no, yeah, we can't do anything about it. It's Maya. But, you know, if it's like Blender or something, I can go, okay, it's fixed. Uh, you know, however many days or weeks or months or years that takes, like, I can fix it. Um, I won't say that's universally true. And here's what, why I'm kind of, um, struggling with the question of open source or what to do, um, you know, in that, uh, in that kind of topic. Open source people won't necessarily help you. And I wonder how prevalent that is. Um, there is a question with 3D graphics that has remained open since, I don't know, 2012, earlier. But there was a forum where I asked a question. Uh, someone had presented information on E and N pole modeling and how to fix those. Um, not having an answer to that really kind of pushed my career back. Um, because that was kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to go into computer graphics. Um, and when that person took that information with them, you know, they have the information, but they're not releasing it. They're not uh, explaining it. They're not documenting it well. You've got broken image links and stuff. Uh, and basically, when you don't know how to model properly, you can't have a model. You can't rig it. You can't texture it. You can't light it. You can't animate it. I can't do anything without this information this person has the information, but they're not giving it out. So is that what I'm going to face with open source stuff? Because open source is made by tens of thousands of people. You know, Linux has is, is been made by, you know, tens of thousands of people or who knows how many, uh, you know, implement, um, implementing different fixes and stuff. So if someone pushes a fix to this thing and they don't properly document it uh, and they don't explain what it is and how it's working, maybe it works, but they're not explaining how it works. Um, and I think a lot of people are aware that documentation or failure to document or in, insufficient documentation is a problem. You know, it's you're going to get that with the proprietary software at least, but you know, I'm just kind of sizing up like what are the obstacles uh, I'm going to face in this process. You know, you, you want somebody to be able to work on this, but like, who do you turn to? Like anonymity is there for a reason, you know, it's to protect you from other people having to, um, or, or not maybe having to, but 
you know, expecting something out of you, right? Like for free. Um, and here we go again with the gratis versus libre thing. Uh, nobody's stopping me from working on it. It's just my um, lack of ability or experience or any kind of knowledge in open source stuff. Um, oh, but who do I go to for the information? And I've got a very specific question and I ask it in a forum that's known for delivering that information and they don't respond in any way or somebody just goes, you know, is, um, I mean, you see this a lot in everything where they're just very callous about giving information. Um, you know, and they, they feel like they don't owe you information or owe you any labor. And, and that kind of brings me back to what is the character of people in or open source? Because I think uh, open source is, you know, as much as it's a technology, it's a, what do you call it? A paracognition of the people who have built it. Um, you know, it's an extension of, of someone, uh, or their labor at least, you know, so, uh, I think someone's works to a degree, a limited degree reflect, um, you know, something about themselves. Um, you know, if you are very self-centered and stuff, then Maybe you're going to be doing proprietary software where you don't want anybody else to question, you know, your choices that you've made with your software or anything, or to be able to alter the works that you've made. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of wonder about the motives of people who have made open source stuff. Um, I'm trying to figure out what words to pick for this, but I wonder how hostile people who make open source stuff are to either people that are new to getting into things or to other people within the community. Um, you know, and I wonder about their motives for why they're doing open source stuff. It, are they doing it because they don't want to be accountable to anybody else? Um, you know, and they're doing something unethical uh, with their product um, and they want to, you know, there's all kinds of, there's gonna be bad people no matter what, you know, in, in any community, but like, you know, and of course there's going to be malware released, you know, um, you know, but I even, I, I even wonder about like more simple products, um, you know, of, of what the intent is behind making them. Uh, and I think the, I think intent is important. I don't think it, it's really something you ought to ignore when you're talking about something you know when it's a crime of course it's important when it's um charity or uh doing things that are good on the surface uh, i think intent is still important in those things um you know politicians are famous for being uh baby kissers and ass kissers you know they don't have good intentions though um, you know, ultimately a lot of times it's self-serving. Um, my intentions, at least superficially that I present to other people, uh, are that, you know, I lean towards the more libre 
side of things. Um, Um, you know, but, and I think the gratis thing is secondary because Windows is not that expensive, guys. Um, paying somebody to fix Windows is a lot more expensive. Um, an app or something that somebody else has made uh, isn't that expensive. Paying somebody to fix the app is expensive. Um, Blender is not expensive. Uh, paying someone to fix Blender for me is expensive. Um, when someone is making software and releasing it, a lot of times they don't really care what happens to other people that are using it. A lot of times they're making it for their own use, but then they'll turn around and they'll go, I need support from everybody else. You know, I don't feel like I'm getting it. And that's very valid. Um, you know, companies are exploiting people and getting free labor um, from the people that are producing open source software and I don't like that. Um, you know, I want people to, I want people to get paid, you know, or it's not even that I want people to get paid. I want them to be able to make a living, you know, to survive off of, um, off of their own works. You know, uh, a lot of times people who are doing open source are doing it on the side with their own free time. Uh, and they're, they're donors, you know, and that's, that's very admirable, but I don't have the money to support you guys. Like I'm, I'm making less than these people that are donating their time. I have, I get paid a living wage and that's pretty much it. You know, I'm able to go out to eat once in a while and stuff. Um, I'm able to finally, finally buy a new phone or, um, you know, a new SSD. Uh, but as far as, you know, being able to pay that back to other people, you know, the reason why I've got a phone or this thing, you know, and, and being in a position where that I, where I can then leverage myself into helping others like it takes an order of magnitude of magnitude of effort more money and time to get to a point where I can do that for other people it's like my head is finally above water for now just you know for the for a temporary thing but you know I don't know when that's going to change like I can be financially in a position where uh, I need help from other people and you know even as it is I'm not self-sustaining right now like uh, it's not going to last it's it well let me put it differently I don't think it's sustainable I'm self-sustaining temporarily uh, and the emphasis there is on the temporal part um, you know I have a lot of advantages that other people don't even have. Like, not everybody has the job where they can afford to buy one of these. Um, you know, and this needs to be, I, I can justify it by saying this is gonna be used for something important. Um, you know, and something that will eventually help other people. I do, you know, I've done distributed computing for 
you know, several years now, just having it run on my machine. Uh, and that's been an expense to me, uh, uh, not a hidden significant expense, but, um, maybe not as significant to other people, you know, and some other people might even question, is that a good use of that money? And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, it's been used to crunch for cures for diseases and math and sciences and stuff. So yeah, I, I kind of have the lifeguard mentality uh, towards Uh, towards charity or nonprofit causes and stuff. I really hope this is recording because it would be disappointing if it wasn't. I'll just download it to YouTube and stuff later. I'm sure it is. But, you know, the lifeguard thing is keep yourself alive first, you know, before you start helping other people. Um... I do question that mentality though. Like I'm not dead set on it. It's my working mentality. Uh, you know, my operating principles, just the thing that I'm working off of until I can figure something else out that's better. Um, you know, cause the people that are saying it are sometimes not people you trust, you ought to trust. <clears throat> don't trust those people who are necessarily saying those things because they are very not altruistic. They are very focused on benefiting themselves, uh, you know, at the expense of other people. Um, you know, they're, they're saying, well, yes, I need to be a billionaire because otherwise I wouldn't be able to help other people. And I'm like, I want to get to a point where I know exactly what I need to survive until the end of my life, right? And maybe then cryogenically freeze myself. It's only $40,000, it's not that much. Plus what, Freon refrigerants, you know, keep myself nice and frosty uh, until they figure out, you know, how to resurrect uh, people from cryogenic hypersleep, cryosleep. Um, you know, I want to get to a point where I don't have to have a job to survive and then I can later, you know, when I know that I'm not going to be a burden to other people, um, you know, I don't need a billion dollars, but I don't want to be a burden to other people either. Um, When, I, when I've gotten to that point where I know, all right, things are, things are stable now. I don't have to have health insurance or something looming over my head every, every single second. I don't have to be uh, worrying about that kind of stuff or, or what's going to happen to me. I can now uh, focus on either hobbies or you know, things that I find fulfilling, you know, I don't have to have a job or a career right now, um, in order, you know, getting in the way of me pursuing, you know, my dreams and stuff, you know, and, and I kind of want to be like, all right, get one single person in the entire world, just one, you know, to where that person doesn't need the help of other people, you know, or can afford to pay other people for their help, uh, you know, and give them the money that they deserve. You know, if they're, if they're taking care of you and stuff, you know, you should be able to pay them a living wage and stuff. So I want to get to a point where I can live. Other people are getting what they need to live. But I want to do that one person at a time. And like, who else am I going to start with by myself? You know, it's like, all right, 
I am being selfish so that I don't have to be selfish. Um, that doesn't mean like exploiting people along the way and stuff, which brings me back to open source. Open source stuff, at least the way that companies are using it, is exploitative. Uh, you know, people are consensually donating their time and effort, you know, into open source stuff. But I also kind of feel like I'm exploiting those people by taking their stuff for free and not being able to pay them back, you know, for using that. Um, I think that whether or not people use it, the stuff is available. The work has been done, you know. Uh, I think they want people to take their stuff and use it. I think they also want to be supported, though. Um, I think it makes their job easier. Um, and I think the end uses of open source, depending on what it's for, you know, I think it can be used for good and evil. Um, but I think that it is a lot harder to provide the tools to something, somebody who's trying to do good stuff um, than it is to be evil and self-centered and stuff. Um, you know, because everybody's being evil, but not everybody's trying to do good. It's, it's really hard to find uh, people who are ethical and good and who you can depend on for, to be ethical and good. Um, I think at the very least, uh, open source is is something that can level the playing field, you know, for people that are poor and stuff. Um, I think it can also make it harder on poor people, um, you know, because uh, companies or governments, you know, can also use those tools to oppress their people. Um, So I don't, I don't know. I think it's a, uh, like, I don't know how, how ethical it is. I think it's a give and a take thing. Um, I think as long as knowledge, um, you know, very, very basic knowledge, uh, needs to be disseminated. Um, people can, you know, will we'll get something out of it. Uh, and it'll make it easier to um, kind of bring people out of the worst poverty. Um, maybe. You know, knowledge has been something that is uh, kind of giving people more opportunities. Like, duh. I still have not gotten any messages. Hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say is... You know, there's a certain set of knowledge that you need to live very basically, you know, just to barely survive. Uh, what do you call it? What's, what's the word? Subsistence? You know, just, what's, is that the word for like when you're just barely squeaking by? Um... You know, where you're barely getting 
the absolute minimum you need to survive. You know, there's just really obvious, simple, stupid stuff that everybody needs to know. Um, and I think open source can be used for that, you know. I think there's a lot of struggle and deprivation right now just because people don't even know the first thing of of um, what they need to do to survive. You know, like you have communicable diseases that can just be like wiped out by hand washing or, or um, you know, you've got contamination of water supply and stuff. Um, you know, just they don't, they don't even know or they don't care, you know, and that's, that's another thing where it's like, all right, they've got the knowledge, they just don't care to use it. Um, you know, it's, I'm living in the U.S., which has just got a lot of stupid people in it, you know, a lot of, um, people that are hostile to knowledge, um, not only is it hard to get the information out, you know, but you got to fight against misinformation. Um, you know, you, you're pretty much fighting against, you know, you're, you're fighting against people with, tools that are more available, um, you know, but that's not going to end all the fights. I think it can solve some of the non-human caused problems. Um, I don't think it can necessarily solve human caused problems. Uh, I think it's, it's just a very, like, a tools with which you can spread information are just very basic tools or they're very advanced tools that can solve very basic problems. Um, and not everybody is going to use the tools and everybody's going to use the tools properly. Um, I think that was my train of thought. I didn't get very far. See, this is kind of like what, I, like why it takes me so long to get anything done. Just cause um, I think big. Uh, I kind of look, you know, have a broad scope of all the problems, but even then like my perspective is going to be different from someone else's. You know, someone else might be, have more experience in a topic, um, you know, or, or they're facing disadvantages and like, they're like, well, I don't have any power or money. Like, this is a very privi privileged position that you're taking, uh, you know, where you don't have to look at this stuff or you know, where you can afford to do navel gazing, like worse versus someone else who's like, you know, I'm going to do whatever I have to, to survive. You know, so I kind of empathize with that. Um, I don't, I don't think that's universal with everybody though. Um, I think it's, discriminatory against poor people to say that, you know, poor people act in desperate ways, you know, that are in are more self-interested or something. I think that really applies more to rich people where they're doing whatever they have to, to keep their, um, to keep their position of power in place. You know, 
know, or to get, get more of it. Um, I think they do more heinous stuff that it ends up being causing more expensive problems than, you know, if someone was to, you know, steal something like, I think pyramid schemes and Ponzi schemes and MLMs and cults and religions that are organized and stuff, organized crime, I think that's more damaging in scale um, when it comes to people who are rich and powerful than anybody acting alone, you know, at the lowest rungs, even if they cleared out, like, um... I don't know, like a jewelry store or something, I still don't think they've done as much damage or could do as much damage. You know, someone who's got, you know, more money and power to do that damage. Uh, it's like damage, the ability to do damage scale proportional. It, the ability to do bad stuff scales with your money and power. That's pretty obvious. You know, it's not nothing that's controversial. Like, if you got a lot of resources, you can do a lot of damage. Uh, I just don't think that's a reflection of someone's character. You know, if they've... Um, I think that different standards ought to be applied to someone who's poor and desperate than if someone's rich and greedy, you know. They're both doing something that's um, damaging, but I think you got to look at the scale. You know, those things aren't the same. Um, you know, I think the, the Spider-Man bromide of, you know, great power and great responsibility being intrinsically tied. Um, I think that also applies to what should be expected of you in terms of, you know, criminal uh, penalties and stuff. Uh, you know, if you commit a crime on a bigger, bigger scale that's like to the degree of like hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, then you ought to be held uh, you know, you don't get to just pay a $1 million fine and go, everything's fine now. It's like, no, you got to pay all that money back. You have to stay in prison because you've shown that you're a danger to other people, right? It's not, you don't get to do this specific type of business for a certain amount of years. It's like, no. You, you harmed people. You stay where you can't harm people. You know, there's, I think those crimes that are like hundreds of millions of dollars or billions of dollars, um, I think those are violent crimes, you know. Uh, like, the family of, of what's his face, uh, Bernie Madoff, is that what I'm thinking of? You know, or, or the original Ponzi or Enron or BP and their oil spill. It's like those people are still walking free and, and they're super ultra rich. Like you guys don't need to keep the money you, you don't get to stay rich, right? You're, you're going to be poor and paying back the damages that you cause the rest of your life. Like, your life is over, effectively. You, you get to be a servant the rest of your life to other people doing hard stuff. Like, you harmed people. You have to pay them back. You, you have to make restoration and remuneration and stuff. It's like, okay, you had all this money and power, and you knew that what you were doing is wrong. More ought to be expected from you in terms of ethics, right? 
you need to be, you know, if, if what you're saying is, is going to be consistent, um, you need to behave more ethically than, than somebody who has lesser means, right? Like you need to be a leader, not just in terms of like money, but you need to be a leader in terms of, you know, virtue and stuff. And that doesn't mean just giving money to charity. That means that, you know, you have to, you have to dedicate your life, you know, and, and your influence and stuff, because you're fine. You're going to be fine the rest of your life, right? Uh, you can have your hobbies and stuff. It doesn't mean that you get to just have a luxury yacht and stuff. Like, that means that more is expected of you in terms of being a servant. Um, like, if you help other people, there's more people that are going to be able to help you and get fun stuff. And you're going to be able to enjoy that with other people. I know that you're already doing that, like, as a billionaire, and you have plenty of people, like, drooling all over your feet, you know, and stepping over each other in order to help you or get you what you want, you know, but you're going to have that if you're, um, like, I don't know why I'm trying to convince them. There's nothing that's going to convince them to help other people. Um. Like, there's, there's nothing but force that's going to convince them or, like, some kind of competition that provides people with, with better stuff, you know, because they're going to continue to try to behave in a mono monopolistic fashion, um, you know, and, and try to restrict the behaviors of other people because it means that they get to keep their stuff. I could tie this to open source stuff somehow. I don't know why I'm not getting messages from my family yet. I'll probably just ask them. Well, I'm just going to be staring at my screen. Maybe I'll restart this in a little while but I've got to read stuff I think read up on uh, open source a bit